If there's one thing that Vandom grinds my gears with right away, it's the fact that he can only use one pouch item. He should be allowed to use like 21. I mean, look at him. This guy has got to be the most avid collector of pouch expansion kits in the entire world, and he uses one pouch item. Maybe he's just so damn strong he doesn't feel like he has to give himself an unfair advantage. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time, we explored Garfont and agreed to help Van Damme on a mission to go check out a weird energy reading in the upper levels of the Titan's Head. This time, let's set out on our way and begin our mission. The Cleansing Spring is our first stop on the way up. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Yeah, let's see Van Damme in a fight right away. Let's get into a fight with a b No, not you. The b No. You. Mordo Blance. I really like Blance. They're such a funny enemy type, and I didn't have my weapon drawn. Crap, I'm not gonna get my bonuses here. Rock uses dual sides, an unusual weapon type, just like we heard. This is another two-handed weapon, so you gotta be careful with the timing. When Vandom slams down the two axes together down the middle, that is the timing for the best possible damage. I would describe Rock as a situationally good attacker who is really good against regular enemies, but not really so much in longer battles. This is made apparent right away by his first battle skill, Storm and Stress. Increased damage for the first 30 seconds of a battle. Second, he has Sickle to reduce aggro gain from all of his attacks. Good, but he's also not the strongest attacker after those first 30 seconds, so it's not all that helpful after, well, the first 30 seconds. And then his last skill, Swoop, increases damage dealt from behind. At level 1, the effect is very slight, so I don't always take full advantage of it. What truly makes Rock stand out are his arts. Muscle Uppercut is the first guaranteed launch art we get. And Fast Twitch is a perfect evasion art. That means that for the duration, you just ignore all attacks. This effect is quite rare on attackers and is great if the enemy is using an art that you just don't want to see right now. Go on, Tora, steal that thunder! Sandstorm is like the opposite of thunder when you uh, think about it in Pokemon terms. Yeah, and we got that level up to that skill right away. Oh, another level up to his skill, too. Let and Tora got a level 3 skill, so he's stealing the thunder from Vandom on multiple levels. Are you guys aggressive? No, you're just little buns. Eh, I've known lots of aggressive buns in my days, though. <laughs> Dig around in here. He's too cool to say any sort of uh, catchphrase whenever he digs around and stuff. And back this way. There's some treasure troves over on that island, and that's where our quest marker is from that mysterious note with that location on the map. Now it comes together. But we can't seem to get up here no matter what we do. We'll have to find another way if we're gonna get up there. These petals are so beautiful. They're just so, uh... Oh, it's a very good thing I didn't trust the beautiful scenery to not kill me. It's like my natural predator preying on my love for the visuals. <laughs> An ether miasma. Take it, this is your first one. Ether miasma? It's a load of poisonous waste products spewed from the Titan's guts. You know, when you get gassy, kinda like that. Um, is there a way through this thing? I can't see any way around it. Hey, no fear. Rock, mate! You're up! My asthma's died down. <laughs> yep, nothing to it. Let's roll! Hey, guys. Where did the Titan tell its mom its gas was coming from? My ass, Ma! <laughs> Been saving that one for years. I don't know if I want to admit that. Uh, moving on to uh, prettier topics. I mean that with every fiber of my being that you are prettier than that, Van Dam. Van Dam is Orion. The first one that we're actually getting to really have a lot of interactions with. 
Urians are classified by having a darker complexion with scaly skin and bright colored hair. They also tend to have traits of fish on their clothing in a lot of cases, so th those are some traits to look out Let's for. Day, the fishy look of their clothes has cultural significance coming from the very titan they inhabit. Also, Urians are um, depicted as having Australian accents in the dub, adding to yet another way that there's a lot of rich culture in all rest. This is a detail that I feel went really underappreciated by the American audiences, and I had a running with somebody who asked me what kinds of accents appear in the game, and when I said, well, there's Scottish, Welsh, uh, English, and Australian, they responded with, you could have just said British, and I was just like, Ugh, when I heard that. But it's cool. It's totally cool. I was the same way once upon a time. I had to have it explained to me. I'm not calling anybody out when I say that, so I just really want people to appreciate it because it's such a cool detail. Before straying too far from the topic at hand, Urians are also classified by muscular builds and pointy ears. Fits our walking, talking, running gag military type to a T. Come this section, we got some fighting we gotta do. This Mordo Blant is kind of a nuisance in some situations. Um, or rather, he's kind of moving. I wanna check out these Volves. Uh, I don't wanna pause and show the chart right now, but Dromark has a skill on his level two affinity that requires taking out some Volfs in Uriah. And they just happen to be right here on the way. And there's the Blant attacking me anyway. See what I told you? Man, and I was gonna be all like, huh, Rip Volf? Rip Volf is right when I'm done with you. And then that didn't happen. I've been caught off guard by every fight so far. Next, I'd like to go into launch. Uh, I'm gonna need Nia to break the enemy and then Tora to tumbly tumbly the enemy if we're gonna have any hope of seeing this go off. Launch is the worst part of the driver combo under normal circumstances. We need to have the enemy toppled already to do it, but it's based on an animation length. You can't really get more time out of launch in the same ways that you can out of topple. Um, if the enemy is just in the air for a certain amount of time, they'll be in the air for that amount of time. You can't keep them up there in the same ways. Um, be it through a fusion combo or through things like level 4 specials and stop time. I'll go for Gaia Crash here. And I haven't really gone over it yet either, but uh, wind specials. Whenever we use wind as a form of the uh, blade combo, typically it doesn't have any kind of damage over time effect. It's knocked down and it's a knockback and blow down. Very fitting for what it is. Kora! Wow! That looked cool! Let's try this. Oh, uh, come on, rock. Get near me. Just because I smell a little bad, I'm getting a little sweaty, I have animals farting on me, doesn't mean you gotta keep your distance. We're all friends here, we've been through so much together. Swing around a little bit more, and there's the timing of our best attack. <laughs> Wind break. <laughs> I guess it is fitting with how they inflicted us with stench a moment ago. Wow, that was good. Tori, you go for your level 3 special? I'm just gonna pick up the pay, that's what the boss does. And I have to say, I'm a very big fan of Vandom just as an addition to the group. His relationship with Rex is immediately so cute and is one of my favorite character dynamics in the story. The, fa the way that he smiles at Vandom as he walks off into town after their initial meeting when he realizes he's not such a bad guy. Uh, how Rex tries to call him out on, you know, hey, you're fighting in wars and you know what that is, right? And it furthers off of Rex saying that he shies away from military supplies earlier in the story. It's really nice. I just like the way that they interact. Level four special, crotch shot! Whoa! Uh, another crotch shot! Not the character, out of all the characters to have crotch shots, I wasn't expecting Van Damme. Uh, all right, so let's uh, keep going. I got three on my gauge right here. Okay, uh, go for that. I really should have a fire elemental in the party so that I can do the blade combo more effectively. I'm just kind of hitting them as much as I can. So there. I'll just do a special to finish you off. I don't really care all that much. My damage is quite low because we have level one skills right now. And uh, also because this fight has been going on for a lot longer than those 30 seconds. Come on. Would they stop calling more into the fight? I can't get up to a level three blade combo before they're dead. Tora, just use your special because I just need to end this. Oh, oh, good item, good item, good item. Give me that uh, harvest necklace. That's a new accessory. Hey, there's that other crotch shot I was asking for. <laughs> what is this battle? It's still going. They will not stop calling for help. 
Uh, enemies, this thing doesn't really have an enrage status, but when it gets low on health, it's likely to call for help at that point as a desperation move. Oh, uh, Tora's using a pandemic. That's water and, uh, earth. And if we could use rock special, the pandemic turns into a final disaster. <laughs> <laughs> this land must be sloped in just the right way to make that keep happening because it did it again when I finished it off. That was the first battle that felt like it went on for quite a while. It was just a frustrating mix of them not having enough health for us to uh, stop them from calling for help. Not that I had a Dark Blade in the party anyway. Rex. Let's swap Rex back into the party. He hasn't really got to do any fighting so far. Uh, Tora, how about you take a hike? Yeah, this is a pretty good combination right here. An Arden. Just what we need. Rex, any good with that anchor? Yeah, I get by. And then here. Now watch. I never thought of using it that way. The trick is to pull it toward at just the right moment. Now you try. Watch yourself, Rex. That Vandom guy is a pretty efficient teacher. Thanks to his lesson, Rex's anchor shot art now has the ability to inflict topple on foes. However, just using Anchor Shot in its own won't generally be enough to topple the enemy. To inflict topple, you'll first need to destabilize the enemy's stance with a break effect. Nia has an art that can inflict break on your on the enemy, so for maximum effect, wait for her to set it you up before and then um, before unleashing Anchor Shot. This art is fantastic. It is seriously one of the best arts in the entire game, and I also like how it kind of comes from Rex's own strength with this being a tool that he always had. Pyre is great, but I feel like they really are a team now. This does, this is healing, it's good damage, it topples an enemy, you can do it from a distance, it's just all around really good. All we gotta do is wait for Nia to switch over to Dromark, which she'll probably do with this enemy being weak to water. I'm guessing that's why they designed it that way. If you would, any moment, Nia. Please switch over because I don't want a repeat of what happened on my first playthrough. Uh, this, she's dead? How did you? Uh, they gave it an AoE attack. Uh, let's, let's heal. I'll use it up and I'll stutter step if I have to. Uh, <laughs> Looks like one of you has inflicted break! See that gauge arrow it's pointing at? This is the driver combo gauge, and it will appear whenever someone inflicts break on an enemy. Use an art that has a topple effect before the gauge runs out, and you'll have an opportunity to inflict major damage. This is what we call a driver combo. Driver combo has to, can be extended through four stages in total. Break, topple, launch, smash. You'll find Rex and his friends have a variety of arts that can be integrated into a driver combo, so try to find the best ways to link them all together. For now, though, why don't you take advantage of Nia's break art and topple that Arden with your anchors? Gee, I would if I wasn't dead. What even is this fight? Get free, 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 okay, good. Right back in time. Anchor shot, go. There we go. Okay, finally. Pirate, you do a special. Vandom, you launch it. No. Okay, whatever. At least we got the topple. That's the important part. On my first playthrough, this happened when I was trying out Vandom, and because he's an attacker like Rex is, I swapped out Rex for Vandom, and I didn't even have Rex in the party for this. So this is meant to be like a cool bonding moment for these two characters, and I didn't even get to do it. So that's what I was afraid of happening, but something potentially even worse just happened right there. Topple Steam Bomb. By doing that at the same time, we get bonus effects. That rose up a... Whoa! Okay, that was actually a pretty cool ending.
You got it after seeing it once. Not bad, kid. Hey. <laughs> Listen up, kid. Drivers use arts. But that doesn't just mean using the powers your blade gives you. There are arts that use your own strength or take advantage of your enemies. There are all sorts. A driver's job is to be smart with his arts and protect his blade. Protect my blade? Yeah. It's a two-way thing, kid. You gotta be aware of the power coming out of her. Don't waste it. Channel it through your arts and protect her. If you can do that, then you're a true driver, kid. A true driver? I don't know. Am I ready? Course you are. That thing from before took me five years to learn that. Five years? Yeah, but you saw it once, and then you aced it like it was nothing. And you got Nia and Tora in tow. Those guys are pretty handy. Kid, you got a bright future. I think I'm gonna spew. Biggie Pon has scary face, but he very nice. <laughs> Suss me out, Furry Pon. I love these characters so, so much. They just feel so alive to me. Also, the word sus apparently existed before Among Us. <laughs> Taught me something too, Van Damme, not just the group either. I want to get up on this rock, thank you. And I want to just take it slow here for a moment. Uh, whoa! Pyro was very enthusiastic about getting the same view here. Uh, well, I like a girl with good taste in scenery. I have something I want you to do. Pay attention to details off in the background. I've been trying to show you the scenery as best I can by moving the camera around. Oftentimes, things that you find interesting about the background are actually very important and not just something that's there for looking cool. Take note of these things. There's so much to these titans, we might not even be able to see all of them on first visit. And I want to see how often your suspicions are right. Higher into the head is the Great Blowhole. Is this gonna be like that movie that I saw as a kid where this is how we get out of the belly of the beast? Yeah, probably not, actually. I mean, the digestive system and the respiratory tract are, well, no, it actually doesn't have that same problem. We saw those two wind, the, we saw the windpipe and the esophagus separately and we went through the windpipe from the mouth, so, no, it actually makes a lot of sense. No. Oh, hi, uh, didn't see you there. I was just too busy taking in the sights. Going on, something I'd like to tell you about is AI. This is not really an important distinction to know of. You don't need to know this to win fights, but if you want to get into time attack and making really optimal parties, it can be very good to be aware of exactly how the AI will behave in different situations. Every character has somewhat of a personality where they have different things that they like in battle, and thus they'll focus on those things more. Speaking of which, there I'm doing one of the things Rex specializes in by toppling from a distance. Um, to go over this, Rex and Vandom function one way, where they like using the driver combo. If the enemy is not currently inflicted with any stage of the driver combo and Rex has a break art, he will do whatever he can to get over to that break art, switch to that blade, and then do it right away. You can count on that very certainly whenever Rex is controlled by the AI. Uh, Vandom will do the same thing with his launch art. If the enemy is ever inflicted with topple, he'll save that launch art and use it in the right situation almost every time. Um, Nia works quite differently. She has, uh, because she's a healer class, she has kind of an override in her AI where I think, I think I mentioned this briefly before, where if they see that the player is low on health, uh, they will switch to whoever has a healing art and just use that right away to make sure that you don't die. It's a consistency thing. Whenever you're not on the verge of death, which we might be here in a moment, can someone draw aggro off this thing? I don't have a tank in my party. I just realized it's probably what's going wrong. Uh, oh. Well, okay. Uh, Nia did a pretty piss poor job right there but she revived me in time for me to use my topple, so that's fine. Uh, and I missed! Great! The Rexterity at play, thank you. Um, Nia has AI that focuses on the blade combo. She'll pay attention to what uh, specials you're using and stay on blades that are the correct element to further the combo. 
For instance, if I were to use Pyra right here with her having a water blade and not another fire blade, she would naturally stay on Dromark because of Steam Bomb. By knowing which elements combo into which other elements, you can predict which blade Nia is going to stay on, and this can be useful in making her just stay with Cross Set or a blade better than Dromark in general. And then Tora is just weird. Every time the opportunity to further the driver combo comes up for him, like when the enemy is inflicted with break, there's a 50% chance that he'll do it. If the roll fails and he doesn't go for it, then he'll do something else that he sees as a good idea in the moment. We have pulled through yet again. You saw that? I thought you were sleeping. How can he sleep through that? that would, he was just... I think we were talking about how Gramps gets jostled around in that helmet, which is a really cute thought, actually, now that I say it out loud. Uh, but how would you sleep through that? Anyway, uh, Tora's AI will focus on one or the other. If he just is in the mood to focus on the blade combo, he'll largely ignore the driver combo. I'm not sure if I fully agree with that decision for Tora, but I'm sure it's a balancing I'm act because Poppy can theoretically be anything. Like I thought. A titan? So that weird power effect they clocked. Maybe this is the cause. Yeah, sure looks like it. I'll hazard it wasn't death by old age, either. Might have been an accident. On the other hand, it might have been attacked. Hey, look! Seems like this Titan dying off has stirred up something else. The Elder Arachno, an unusual shape of driver, has a blade right behind it. It'll be fine. Sure, we can turn it around. Why are they already complaining like, hey, we can turn it around? We haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> Do they just have that little faith in me because I don't have a tank in the party? Uh, Vandom, you got the most HP. I hope you can handle it. Uh, apparently not. If I got my aggro, you have aggro reduction on rock, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll hit that. This thing mostly uses water arts. Also has a blowdown effect, and it's also got... Well, I guess we'll, we should really see all of it right away. Uh, go for a Steam Bomb, Nia, please. I want to get my level 3 special on Pyra. I should heal up now, not let myself get low on health just because I'm holding out for that topple. It's a dangerous balancing act. Because that topple art is so good, it can be really easy to kind of use it incorrectly. Why is it always me? Why is it always me? Why is it... Oh, no, I'm not alone. Okay, I got my wish. Now it's Nia. Vandom has got the axe. Good. If it seems like I'm kind of going back and forth between Vandom and Vandam, it's because the series itself is kind of inconsistent with this, with it being a, a one that appears in all of them. Uh, for instance, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, it was Vandom, and that was the first time it was in English, though, so I'm kind of predisposed to that pronunciation. I know it's technically Vandam, and uh, just talking about the whole Jean-Claude Vandam thing. This is bad. Pyra, can you get your... I don't know why I'm complaining about Pyra. Give me my level three special, Sword Bash. Let's go! Nice! Hold on, it dropped me off right next to the potion. Now run like a coward, Rex! Ah. Stubborn boy. Wow. Nia, help. Help up Vandom. Help up Vandam. Now let's go. We should be able to win this. This is tough without Tora. It really just shows what a valuable asset to the team he is. And I can also see that if Tora, if he just seemed like a really unattractive character to use because of the whole uh, Tiger Tiger thing, that could give someone trouble where not having a tank in the party that's effectively doing their job would just make it hard. There we go. Jeez. The blade returned to its core. So that monster was in resonance with the blade. Tora cannot resonate. Stinky monster can resonate. Not fair. But Master Pond have Poppy. Oh, Poppy. <laughs> if a blade loses its driver, it winds up like this. So is it like dead? Nah. The crystals start glowing again after a bit of time. Then a new driver can resonate with it. But 
There's a bot? Its memory will be totally zapped. It'll be reborn as a new blade. Won't remember a thing. Yeah? That's pretty rough. To have all your past wiped out like that. But memories can be... painful as well. They can be a terrible burden. And a blade can live forever, as long as the crystal exists. It's just as well. Eternity is a long time to collect bad memories. Pyra. I'm sorry. I was just thinking, sometimes being able to forget is a blessing. Come on, let's get finished up here. That's... A core crystal! What? Well, that's where they come from. Out of Titans. This one's brand new and ready to resonate. Like a big steak, right before you take that first bite. It'll probably end up buddying up with a bunch of drivers. Every time the driver dies, it'll forget everything and return to its core. Eventually, it'll resonate with a new driver. Drivers dying. Titans dying. The blade just keeps on living through it all. It's a never-ending cycle. An eternal history. As mortals, we'll never be able to understand. It's incredible. Found her. Could her old driver still be alive somewhere? Perhaps. I'd like to talk about blades as a concept for a moment here, now that we're learning more about them. There's, well, there's the beastly core crystal. By going into Bond Blade, it's just not ready to go quite yet. This is based on a certain level of story progress, so don't worry about this core crystal and waiting around for it. It'll happen when it happens. I feel powerful. Bing! My conversation skills have improved. I mean, I did. Me, yes. There's a lot about blades that have been gone over up to this point. Some of it's pretty subtle. So just so that you understand how the world works, I'd like to go over how exactly blades and drivers function as a concept. Ether is in the air all around all rest. This is an immense source of power that humans can't tap into. Blades can naturally tap into this and use it. The weapon is a part of their body and they often coat their weapon in ether to make it stronger. Blades have regenerative properties, so their weapon is not permanently destroyed if it breaks. The they have the ability to send all this power to humans and for them to perform superhuman feats. Now, why would a blade give this power to a human and not just assert its higher power because they have all these superhuman abilities? Because both are stronger when they're physically close together, as we see in battle, and because blades tire out from using this energy themselves too much. Specials can only be used every so often, and that alone might be insufficient. Blades are only brought to life by their driver, and if their driver dies, they too lose this life. If their core is destroyed, they're gone for good. Another cool thing is that blades evolved to have weapons. According to developer interviews, they were just humanoids that were able to spawn objects from their bodies. Since blades and drivers needed each other to survive in prehistoric times, it makes sense that they would have become weaponized over time, while the weaker blades that produce non-helpful objects would just simply die out. It's a cool bit of lore that I wish made it into the game, but I guess there wasn't really a good place for it. 
Okay, bring it on. Mordo Blanche, more like see it a Mordo Blanche. That's all I had. Woohoo! Here we go down the rapids. This would be so terrifying to do in real life, especially having lead boots that would weigh you down in the water, though. But Rex has got some strong ass legs on him. Yes. A broken knife. It snapped in two. I guess they used to used it to try and open this chest, but failed. Wait, there's something written on it. Wealth and fortune to Erebos, dearest grandson. Looks important. If we ever come across its owner, we'll have to ask them about it. And there's our progress made on the mysterious oh note. My. Still not quite done with this yet. Though we can open this treasure and get an art stealth two and a common core crystal. Since we finished up at our mission, let's see what's going on back in town. <laughs> hey, hold still. I thought you were a tough salvager, Rex. Give me a break. Pain is pain, isn't it? How about you? Are you hurt? Don't worry. It's just a scratch. Ah! Ah! That was on purpose. You were hurting me on purpose, weren't you? Well, I wasn't. Honest. I was just rubbing the lotion in. Rex, you rubbed it too hard. Ah! It hurts. Hi, See? you two. Give me a look at that. What is this? Haven't seen this before. Don't know why a blade would be stuck with a bunch of wounds. And they're exactly the same as Rex's. Incredible. Never heard of such a thing. It's all true. I just thought it was an accessory. Van Damme. That's not my style. Blades are supposed to heal up right away, no matter what the wound. If the crystal's in one piece and the driver's alive, nothing can touch them. So why is she all bashed up? That's just how the chips fell. It is what it is. What it is is a problem. It means if one of you kicks the bucket, you both do. You told me that a good driver always protects his blade. So that's what I'll do. I'm gonna protect her. Easier said than done, kid. Listen, Pyra, she saved my life, brought me back from the dead. So I won't die again. I've got to live for her sake until we get to Elysium, at least. We can make it together. Rex, you mean? Going to Elysium? I can't let that stand. It won't do. A bunch of amateurs stealing the show? The script exists for a reason. Akos. Please speak only when you're spoken to, traitor. Traitor, traitor, traitor! Nia, you're one of the baddies now, you villain. <laughs> I didn't betray anyone. Then why do you stand with them? You think that is where you belong? But I... I... <laughs> Who are these goons? Torna. They're trying to get their hands on Pyra. Torna! Akos, just tell us what you're here for. Well, the Aegis, of course. I just had to come and see the leading lady with my own eyes. Jin put you up to this. Well deduced. Oh, by the way, his orders were to deal with you in whatever manner I see fit. So, you know what that means. He wouldn't. You're lying! Why the surprise? Did you think he would still care about you? Oh, to live in your reality. Ow! Well, well. Your part in this play is coming to an end. So, time for you to shuffle off the stage. What's wrong? 
I know the name Torna. They've taken the lives of too many drivers, including some of my crew. Good people. Rumor says it's because they're collecting core crystals. So, if this Akos is one of them, you, Zuo, get everyone out of the village. Yes, sir. You ready? Ready. Got it. Thanks for this. No problem. It'll be tough. His blade, Obrona, she can manipulate the ether in the air. It lets him counter elemental attacks by generating fields of the opposing element. Finally, a decent opponent for a change. Let's go! Uh, why do the bad guys never give me a chance to switch to Tara? <laughs> It's time you learn to take your teamwork to the next level, introducing Chain Attacks, a way for your whole party to deal massive damage to the enemy. First, let's take a look at the party gauge. We may have touched on this before, but it has more uses than just getting your allies back on their feet. When all three sections of the party gauge are fully charged, you're ready to launch a Chain Attack by pressing plus. During a Chain Attack, each of your party members can choose one of their currently engaged blades to perform a special with. For example, First Rex might choose to use a special with Pyra, then Nia might choose Dromark, and finally Tora can use one with Poppy. Once everyone's had a turn, that's a single round. What's more, during a chain attack, you have the opportunity to destroy the unhelpful elemental orbs that attach to your enemies when using specials. If you use a special with an opposing element against an elemental orb, it'll be easier to smash, and you'll do massive damage if it does smash. So think about the order in which you want to summon your in which you summon your blades and which specials you use. Then when you next start a chain attack, the party gauge will be replaced with a full burst gauge. The full burst gauge will fill up, fill up a little each time you smash an elemental orb. And when it's full, a full burst will initiate. And as you might have guessed, when a full burst initiates, your enemies will be on the wrong end of massive damage. Earlier I told you you'll need to hit home with a level 3 blade combo to add an elemental orb, but this time, let's just add a water orb to Akos for free. I'll drop you a little hint so that you can smash the orb effectively. You're better off striking with a special that has the opposite element, which in this case is fire. I've maxed out your party gauge for you. Why don't you try hitting the plus button and trying a chain attack for yourself? I'm gonna wait and use this when I feel like I really need to. I hope I don't die. I don't have a lot of hope. This guy is one sadistic dude and that's kind of reflected in his fighting style. And we don't really have a good party for this. Vandom's not the best of tanks. He's got a good amount of HP, I guess, though, but he ain't keeping Agar off of Rex all that well. Uh, let's go ahead and... He's got a water orb on him, so we could always do fire, water, fire to get two orbs built up. Fire? And then Nia. Okay, I'm gonna wait a little bit before doing this. Akos fights using twin blades, a type of blade weapon that we have never seen before. Uh, he mainly is a... He's electric element himself, using attacks of the same element. Uh, we'll get that. He shackled me. Shackle driver means that I can't do anything to attack. I could cancel out of this with a chain attack, but like I said, I'm trying to... What am I doing? This is fine. By activating the chain attack, I not only canceled the shackle driver, but I also instantly got up from my topple. Keep that in mind. Here I'm trying to be all fancy though, but no, it's perfectly okay. Pirate, you go. This will do double damage to that orb. It takes three hits to destroy it normally. That's two. Cora. Nice. Rock? You rock the house. Go. BB. Good. Because we smashed that orb and hit that timing, our specials are now up to level two and we get another round. Go for it, Rex. Overkill starts. You see that bonus 137%? For every hit that we smack the enemy with now, we get increased experience points and gold drop from this battle. It's a great thing to be aware of. Hit for as much as you can. Unfortunately, we just got a lot of level, a lot of one-hit specials here. Not really a great demonstration of it, but we still got some bonus experience points, and that's looking great. Such an honor, sharing a stage with the legendary Aegis. Ah! Ah! Huh? Why would the driver? It seems that they're taking each other's damage somehow. So that means that the Aegis is a mere mortal right now. In that case, a little more damage, and she'll be easy to deal with. <gasps> ah! 
Pyra! Uh. Kids these days, I swear. Can't leave you alone for a minute. Could you use a hand? Leave it to me. I'll take this dog down! Oh. to deflect now. You and your fancy moves. You lack grit. Just too many of these bit players. My interest has waned. Abrona, perhaps it's time for another tale. <sighs> sure, sure. Try. How is she? She's not badly hurt. Dromark thinks she just needs rest. That's good to hear. Maybe. I used too much power again. Hey, Rex. Hmm? Know what the difference is between me and that Akos fella? Well, he's a bad guy trying to get Pyra. And you're... No. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, kid. What if I told you that we weren't that different? Huh? My crew at the village, we think we're fighting for justice. But a just fight? I'm telling you now, there's no such thing. What people call justice, it's just an excuse to fight. War is war. The more you stand up for yourself, the more people want to fight you. Before you know it, you're in a war. Listen, all I'm saying is, we've got our fight, and he's got his. But what he's doing is... Yeah, it's bad. But war ain't about right and wrong. Power. That's all it is. And power can take many different forms. It depends on the heart of its wielder. If we don't use our power, just because we're scared of it, we're done for. As for who's right and who's wrong, no one knows for sure. So all we can do is protect what's important. I think I understand. We all got our own war, kid. My... war?